Hi fiends, I'm Donna Jean and welcome to Donna Jean's Coffee House of Horror. I am delighted I'm here with the ladies from Screen Test. Yay. And once this interview is done, I know you will be delighted and intrigued and excited about seeing the film. Quiet on the set, this is a take. We are making history. <gasps> It can't be! Baby Frankenstein! My God, what have I done? <laughs> nah, nah. Cut! Nah, Cut! Nah. I am paying you to be a scream queen and scream you will. It's not the throat, but definitely the vocal cords. What about a screaming? Absolutely not. She's the scream queen. For a few weeks, she's just Angie Newborn, regular gal. No phone service and no internet. Everyone knows why you're here. You look just like that movie star. Apparently, she has a way with sex and blood. If I stay, I could get a few pictures, and if she autographs them, it could become super valuable when she dies. So just the two of you work this place? Eh, uh, old as he helps out, but his people skills aren't as good as mine. He's a peeping Tom. He is a creepy kind of character. I'm getting the help I need. How hard is it to do? It's a pilot light. It's not brain surgery, right? Fine. The hell say? What happened? An explosion! Come quick! She was smoldering. This reminds me of that scene in Death House. Oh, you regret that! The hell? I heard you threaten her. Was this your way of getting even? This kind of reminds me of that scene in Family Possessions. Multiple accidents don't just happen. Well, I'm doing a booming business tonight. I seem similar to dead. Well, I know two things. I'm not the killer, and Angie's films are tied in. My money's on Otis. Oh! Don't you come any closer. He gave me a heart attack. He's got his problems, but... <laughs> He's no killer. It's gotta be him. Or maybe somebody else did it. But if there's one more accident, I'm coming right for you. <gasps> Go to Doc. Tell him we got another body. I thought I heard something back there. Maybe it's Otis. Where the hell'd you get that? Where's my weapon? No! Why don't you go back to your room and stay out of sight? <laughs> Scream test! That's kind of catchy, don't you think? I'm here with Felisa Rose, who plays Angie Newborn. Thank you so much for having us. I love you guys. Mercedes Davis, who plays Millie. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and thank you for having us. I'm really excited to be here. First timer right here. Can't wait for you guys to see the film. <laughs> and welcome. CJ Stuzzi, who plays Hilda. Hello, bonjour. <laughs> B.T. Bauer is Doc Williams. Hi, everybody. It's so great to be here. Hannah Celeste, who is also B.T.'s daughter, is also in the film. Hey there. Thank you so much for having us. And Ginger Cook, the lady who has the big job of being the editor and is also the co-producer. This is great having us here, Donna Jean. We really, really appreciate this. This is going to be fun. Okay, let's get down to this because this is so exciting. We'll start with Felisa. You've done almost 200 films. <laughs> I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm, I'm 97 years old, so it makes sense. <laughs> Are you kidding? I thought you were, I just sent you a text saying I thought you were my daughter's age. So, and, the, and I tell no tales. <laughs> So, what sets Scream Test apart from some of these other films? Wow. Well, first of all, I wanted to work with Bob and Ginger Cook so, so much. I met them at their, their festival, the Senflo Film Festival, years ago. And we just sort of had this great connection and camaraderie. And when I read the script, I just thought it was absolutely a lot of fun and you know there was a ton of humor it wasn't just like kind of slash them up and um i love the mystery element and certainly you know she's quite the character angie because there's a lot of layers i get to play an actor in a movie within the movie and so all of those kinds of you know colors and levels as a as an actor you want to play them and uh and certainly it was a wonderful playground with all of these marvelous women it was incredible and you know, this is a spoiler-free 
interview. <laughs> but wait till you guys see the end. <laughs> always so, the end. The end is always. the best. Yeah, it's so great. I know. Sleepaway Camp. We're still talking about it 38 years later, and that ending certainly, you know. Yes. Gave me. Well, you know, this may rival that. So, Felisa, the star of the movies with the amazing endings. So. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. That would be tremendous. We would love that. Now that the filming is complete and behind you, what are your hopes for what happens with the film? I feel like this movie has, and I, I told Ginger this just today, I feel like it's a movie with a lot of heart. It's very pure and it's very authentic. And I feel like a lot of times when you make a movie, what happens on the set translates onto the screen. So. I mean, I have to say, I've been very lucky to work on a lot of great films that I love and I love the cast and the crew. But this one in particular, we, we filmed in Florida. There was a lot of love, a lot of you know great times, great people. Um, and I just think you can really see that we're enjoying ourselves. Um, so I think especially um, the climate of the world and what's going on, it's really nice to sort of jump into a movie that has a lot of love and um, adventure. So you really don't know who did it. It's a mystery. It's a lot like Clue, one of my favorite mm -hmm. films. And I think people will really enjoy the ride. I agree. And having been able to watch it prior to the interview, uh, comparing it to Clue is in terms of the feel of it and the fun of it. That's such a, an accurate description. I'm so glad. Thank you. What would you say that your fans could do to help get the word out about screen tests? Because right now with uh, drive-ins only being the only theaters, word of mouth is really important. Oh, definitely. And certainly social media is really important. So I love my social media. I love Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Um, you know, I show everything I'm doing. And I think if, if people could just kind of go to our Facebook page and like the page and check out all of the provided information with where the film will be at certain drive-ins or even calling local drive-in theaters that you want to see it at would help us tremendously. Um, I'll be getting back into conventions as you know, Donna Jean, with you, we have a lot of fun there. Come mm -hmm. and I'll, you know, talk all about this film on panels and at my table and just really word of mouth. That's how the independent films get some notice and notoriety. And we greatly, mm -hmm. greatly appreciate it. Yeah, you and I, uh, Felisa, have had a number of conversations that I have with Ginger as well about this new kind of filmmaking, you know, that's not just the big MGM kind of movies. And uh, independent films is really where it's at. Definitely, that's where all of the heart and the passion and you know, some of the most creative uh, films have been because it's like people really wanna make it happen and they do everything they can. They get friends together and, um, and they make something special. And I think that's what we've done here. So I'm really proud of the movie and I appreciate anybody kind of jumping on this screen test train and enjoying it with us. And uh, you've had a good fortune to work with some of your good friends and you worked with Dave Sheridan and Vincent Ward again in this. How was it working with them again? Oh, I just love them. We sort of can, we finish each other's sentences. Um, it's always a good time. You want to work with people on films who you feel safe with and you have um, great connections with. Um, and especially, usually we do horror films together where you're kind of like getting slashed and killed and you want to make sure that the environment is, you know, understandably um, kind of safe like i said so working with friends is always a good thing but this was this film had more laughs than anything we definitely had a good time and it shows like i said so enjoy it and we can't wait for you to see it <laughs> and we'll move on to mercedes who plays millie yay hey and welcome it's <laughs> so good having you here mercedes hello good to be here thank you for having me this is your first feature film. Mm -hmm. What was it like being on the set with these amazing ladies and just the amazing cast? I couldn't have asked for a, 
a better first time film beyond. I mean, Ginger was amazing and very helpful and made me feel comfortable. I kind of, um, I didn't really get to meet Hannah or Celeste. Um, CJ is such a sweetheart. Oh my God. She just, she's so sweet and welcoming. And then my girl, Felissa, I just kind of latched on to her and she just made me feel comfortable. And then with Dave and um, Vincent, they were, you know, at first I was kind of, you know, intimidated, you know, by them. But after a few days on set, everybody kind of opened up. We had our little inside jokes and um, Bob was great. He just made sure I was, you know, on point. Just them giving me the opportunity. I couldn't have asked for it to go any better. It was perfect. Was there anything you found that you disliked being on the set? Not really. No, I, everybody, it was literally, it was like playtime. We'd have our times where we'd sit it out and then we'd wait for them to like change everything. And then it's like, all right, let's go back and play again. So <laughs> I, it was fun. I had a great time. <laughs> I wouldn't change anything. It wasn't anything I really disliked, no. And you got to play, and this is a little bit of a, uh, a giveaway here, but you got to play a burned body. What was that like? How did you prepare for that? Oh Lord, and that was uh that was actually day one. And I got up at around I think it was maybe six AM. Took a few hours just sitting, but I didn't really do much. Just um kinda had to lay there and look dead. But the makeup <laughs> part for day one, that was really fun. I've never had that extent of, you know, the special effects makeup on me. And the guy who did it did an amazing job. So I really enjoyed that. I would guess that it being day one and you had all of that stuff done. Um, oh yeah. It, it had to, it had, well, I guess it got the worst part out of the way. <laughs> and this is before I met anybody, before I met any of the other cast, I had just got there and got up and their first time seeing me is in <laughs> the, the burn victim <laughs> makeup. So I think I made a lasting impression, first impression on everybody. <laughs> okay, we're going to move on to CJ, who plays Hilda, aka the swimmer. <laughs> and again, a little, a little bit of a, uh, a, a spoiler, but your character <laughs> dies in the film. Yes. What was your, how, what did you do to prepare for that? Well, um, I don't want to give away too much, but it's the way my character dies. I um, I have never really seen that done before in a film, and I didn't know too much about it. So I really had to, you know, do some research. You know, do you die instantly? Like, are you in pain? Da 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 da. da. Um, can you move? Whatever. And then um, and then when I went on set, actually Bob really helped me because um, he knew quite a bit about it too. And also Dave, he was like, oh, no, you need to do it this way. Or <laughs> And um, Felissa, they, they all, it was like a, um, you know, it was like a, a team of people working together and everybody kind of gave their input. And that really helped. I love working like that. So um, you do your own research and then you check with the other actors. It's like, you, you have that too, right? <laughs> yeah. And you have a, a scene in the movie where you slap Darby Hilton's character, Otis. Yeah, it's And like... it looks very real. Is Was there a process you went back to make that look that real? Well, Darby and I had a terrible argument. No, 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 it's just like... <laughs> <laughs> so I asked him before the scene, you know, it's like a, you know, and he was like, yeah, slap me for real. I was like, are you sure? And he was like, yeah. And, I, and then he was like, just don't hit my ear. And he said it like, I don't know, like he must have had some ear problems. And then I was so focused of not hitting his ear that I think I actually hit it every single time. <laughs> and, um, but I did hit him for real. And he actually was, he was the one who was like, no, you know, let's do this. And um, which is awesome, you know, <laughs> because he was the one to get hit. <laughs> it sounds like he was both a professional, but a friend. And that oh, was sorry, be so professional. I mean, everybody on this set was super yeah. professional. It was, um, and as I, uh, as I said, you know, the camaraderie among the actors and crew, that was really special. Like everybody helped each other out. So, you know, you, you don't really have that a lot. 
unfortunately that's true yeah and i know this is going to cause all of the the men who are watching this to want to see the film but there's this the scene that you're in the pool mm -hmm. and i believe it was written that you were supposed to be naked yes. and this was being filmed in february <laughs> well, so Yes, so I think I arrived on the set like end of January, but it was like first week of February in Orlando, an outside pool, not heated, and I was so nervous, you know, because I, you know, you, you shoot scenes several times, and so I thought, you know, I'm going to probably be in the pool for eight hours, mm. but then Bob, you know, so I really want to give credit to Bob. He took Bob and, and Ginger Day took so much great care of me. They bought me a bodysuit, but I still had to be sexy. But they they really went out of the way to make me feel comfortable. I, I was still cold. <laughs> I was still freezing. And that was actually a problem because at some point I'm supposed to be dead and I was shivering. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> so I had to find a way not to shiver and I could hardly control it. So <laughs> but um yeah, they really made me comfortable. I was still cold, but yeah, I mean, nude. Um, but I remember, I think it was Darby at some point to come. To, he came to me, had written the first draft of the screenplay where, you know, the character's written to be nude. And she was, he was like, aren't you supposed to be nude? And I was like, no, no, please. <laughs> well, it's, it's curious because the movie, it takes place like in a tropical paradise where it's warm. So knowing that you were that cold, you just couldn't tell watching it. Oh, I'm so glad. I haven't seen the movie yet, so you're all ahead of me. <laughs> so I'm like, thank you. <laughs> well, you did, did so well. So I'm excited for you to see it now. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, if you have such great support, it, you know, I, I really have to give like the compliment back to the others. <laughs> Well, I think that's the amazing thing about something when it really works, and this film really did, okay. is you were all amazing in your roles, and it just came together as that incredible whole. Oh, thank you. So sweet. <laughs> so we're going to move on to BT. You played Doc Williams. Yes, I played Dr. Williams, ear, nose, and throat doctor to the stars. Who is also a herbalist an herbalist. Uh, however, I have to say working with vocalists, prednisone is the name of the game to get vocal cords back in order. So I know Angie was thankful that I gave her a, a side prescription besides sending her to that beautiful private resort. <laughs> and you've worked with director Bob Cook before. How did it, how was it working with him again? I was just so thrilled that he invited me back. Uh, we did Nearly Departed together, which is actually showing after screen test at the, the drive-in theater in Ocala, which I'm excited about. Um, he actually came and saw me in a theatrical production of The Producers and invited me to be a part of that film and then invited me back for screen test. And it's just a wonderful experience. Mm. And this is the second film that you've been with your daughter, Hannah, who plays Marla. You weren't in a scene together, but you were both there. So how was that working with her? It is. We actually talked this morning and we're, we're figuring out what we've actually done. We've gotten to do four theatrical shows. Now, Cream Test would make the second feature film. We did a short film, just the two of us together, and we've done two commercials as well as we just wrapped a new project that I know we're both excited to announce and can't, but uh, hopefully within the next month. So if you follow Screen Test, certainly you'll hear about it down the line, but hoping in another month that we can announce another project that we'll have worked on. Oh, maybe we can do another interview. I hope. Hey everybody, but keep following Screen Test. Now, BT, you're also a stage actress. Which do you feel was easier to prepare for? They're so different in many ways. I, I have to say that, you know, when you're preparing for film, what was challenging to me is when you're developing a theatrical character, it's ongoing and 
you kind of have the rest of the cast, you know, the, interacting with you. And sometimes with the film, you know, when they say action, you have to really be right there in the moment. And I don't know, I'm sure Phyllis remembers, but we had just met. It was the first shot of the, the movie of the day. And we actually had a little bit of improv time together. And it helped me um, to be right, get right into uh, where we were in regards to uh, the, the scene that we ran in. I really liked that. I really enjoyed that. Mm. I have to say too, that I did not read past my scene because I didn't want to be influenced at all with the goings on of what was to happen since all I knew was I was sending my patient to a lovely secluded island off mm. the coast of Florida. And um, I expected that she was gonna get a lot of nice rest and relaxation and gain her voice back. And I think she did. <laughs> I think she did too. <laughs> now, if you were asked to be in another horror film, what would be your ideal character to be? Well, you know what? I think that I would really love to sink my teeth into a murderer. <laughs> ah. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, just one of those under the surface crazies that the audience knows, um, but nobody else knows. Uh, maybe uh, you would just never expect this sweet person, and then it, towards the end, you just see this maniacal character come out. I don't know. I think it would be a blast to uh, play that kind of a role. It sounds like it would be a lot of fun. Okay, we'll move on to Hannah a bit. Hannah, so with, with being in the film with your mom, was that something that, um, it sounds like you were in one other film together, and how was it working with her again? Well, we actually did not see each other on this, this film set, but I mean, I love working with my mom. She's my best friend. So it's like fun getting to that opportunity because not many people can say that they have worked with their mom and we've done so many projects together. I can't wait to do many more. Hmm. That's awesome. What is your favorite horror film? Did it help you to prepare for this one? I would have to say that my favorite horror film is going to be The Shining. You know, I, I love a good psychological thriller. Mm -hmm. So that one is just, you know, it's a, it's a cult classic. You got to love it. And I just think that it's an amazing film. And this one, I feel like everybody that loves, you know, that thriller, that kind of mystery, you don't know what's going mm -hmm. on, will really love this film as well. Oh, I so agree with you. So what role in the future would you like to play? Mm, of course, my answer is gonna be similar to my mom's, birds of a feather, right? Um, <laughs> but I really would love to play and star in like a psychological thriller. Maybe something like, everybody loves a good vampire story. You mm. know, something mystical, something maniacal and devious and dubious. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling you would both be really good in that too, if you did it together. Oh, I would love to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and I would love to see it. So. Let's well, move thank on. you. Hopefully in the future, right? Fingers crossed. <laughs> and, you know, having this on your portfolio could only but help too. So, cause it's just exactly. such, a, such an awesome movie. Exactly. I was chatting with everybody a little bit yesterday and I said, you know, I have these feel good movies, things I throw on if I'm not feeling good or if I, it's just a stressful day. And I, this is moving on to that list. So. Oh, thank you. I'm so happy you enjoyed it. <laughs> so let's move on to Ginger. So you're kind of the one that had the big job here in terms of being the editor. Do you want to talk about the creation of the project and how did this come to be? 
Well, I actually have to give the credit to Bob who wrote the script as well as uh, directed it. As he always says, the director always, uh, what everybody takes the credit, but the director takes the blame. So <laughs> this one's feeling like everybody's gonna be taking the credit, which is in my opinion, great. Um, when he wrote this script, it was as Felissa had said, she'd come to our festival years ago for a sleepaway camp. We showed that and did a Q and A and of course absolutely fell in love with her cause she's just amazing and fun and so energetic and positive. So he had, he wrote this script for her with her in mind. So as much as she thinks she's not Angie Newborn, she is Angie Newborn, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Although she did tell me on set, which was interesting that she was pulling from all the different screen queen divas that she had met and known over the years. So it was like an interesting blend of, you know, sometimes she's real flirty, sometimes she's really smart, sometimes she's really wicked, sometimes she's really, so, so I thought that was really cool that with her vast experience with these kind of movies to be able to pull all from all these different personalities and, and blend it into such a fabulous character, I thought was pretty cool. We were lucky to have her to be able to do that because uh, there are not a lot of women that have bring that kind of experience or knowledge to to a film. So that was really cool. As far as the editing is concerned, um, you know, everybody gave me really good stuff. When you work with professionals, which is really nice because we've worked on some movies in the past where we've had nothing, no SAG people. And it's great that SAG has come out with these ultra low budgets where you can hire SAG people and bring them onto a project because the, the level of professionalism that they bring puts the bar nice and high. So anybody who you do bring in who maybe is not at that level of professionalism, all they can do is go up. They can only go to match what the highest professional level is, which mm -hmm. is fantastic and totally worth doing those ultra low budget contracts right. Because we lucked out to get Felissa number one. She brought us Dave and Vince, which were both excellent contributions. Um, CJ, I think, Bob found through one of the sites. I'm not sure how we totally got her. Mercedes was local. And then of course, BT and Hannah, we had worked with before. So we knew, already knew their level of professionalism. Um, and then Jeff, my husband had met on this movie, Desperate Waters. He was a producer on that. And then Darby, this has actually been an interesting stretch for Darby Hinton, who a lot of people might recognize as the little blonde boy from Daniel Boone I hate to say about a billion years ago, but probably <laughs> from the 50s. And he's, we found him at a cowboy convention. So he tends to like cowboy stuff. So this one, his fans have had an interesting commentary. They really want to see it, but it also makes him look like the creepy bad guy, which he is. <laughs> 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 which I wanted to ask Mercedes as being the one that uh, Darby was peeping at as well as Felissa, but his main goal was to peep at Mercedes. Um, how did that feel <laughs> getting ready for that? Um, ah, it was, it was nerve wracking because he's such not a creepy person in real life. <laughs> so just to kind of keep that in mind, he's peeping at me at all points, but still my character is kind of going with it. I don't want to give away too much, but it, it was uh, different just because he's not like that in real life. He's such a sweetheart, just, mm -hmm. you know, it, but it was his character, but it was fun though. I liked it, <laughs> enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I guess Felissa got peeped at too, but she's probably used to that. No, <laughs> 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 I'm kidding. Oh my Only my husband who, uh, oh. <laughs> the stalker he was a, <laughs> hilarious but Darby is like one of the nicest people you could ever meet and he's such a great actor and he just he kills this role he's so good um but he's really you know such a tender heart so it's it was wonderful working with him and you know and the way you film you never really I, I didn't feel like I was being <laughs> peeped in on but he does such a good job in the movie it's so <laughs> classic it's great Oh dear. That has to actually be amazing. Knowing the individual so well and filming and having fun and then watching the film and and being terrified by things that you know that people who are so kind would never do. That's just you guys are amazing that you pull it all off. I mean, I have to say, especially with films like these, like whether it's a horror movie or a mystery or, you know, classic suspense, psychological, all the subgenres, 
they, it does take quite a bit of you really kind of going into different places in your per own person. You know, I say you have a, like a repertoire and you pull from all of that. And I think especially with these, you know, you, at moments you're terrified, you're being, you know, maybe a gun to your head or a knife to your back or what have you. And that doesn't happen in real life. So you really do have to kind of have a full creative kind of, you know, um, body. All of that has to come to, you know, out and you have to express that. So it is, there's a lot that goes on in making these kinds of films where you have to get very emotional. And that's why I can't wait to see BT play that kind of a character. I know she's going to be absolutely incredible. Um, and those kinds of roles are the best. They are, that's why I love the genre more than anything. And I will only work in the genre because the characters are just absolutely extraordinary. Well, Felisa, you are one of those scream queens that uh, people are always going to want you in that genre anyway. So <laughs> you can't escape. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you. May I just uh, say, you know, I believe that the reason why Felissa has done so many movies is that she is such an encourager. And, you know, she always uplifts the people that are around her and makes you feel extremely comfortable right off the bat. And, you know, there's something to say with that. And when she talked about the connection, she's exactly the, the person that helped do that with Bob and, and Ginger and Felissa. When you bring that love to uh, the set, it is contagious. And I really wanted to give her a shout out and a hugs your way, Felissa, because you're just an incredible person. I love your gosh. That I, I, oh, I'm crying. I mean, that means the world to me. I really like not, I'll just say one sentence and I just feel like that's all life is about. It's just about love and goodness and relationships. Like all of this stuff is fun and good, your work. And, but this is the, the best thing in the world. So thank you. That means everything to me. Thank you. You know, it's funny. My uh, thing was in going to conventions, doing interviews at conventions, things like that, which I look forward to getting back to being able to do again. And I have never met anybody who met Felissa that did not say that she is the kindest person they've met. She is beautiful. She is inspirational. We all love you, Felicity. You're stuck with it. Wow. Well, that's <laughs> flying on this big cloud. Thank you. <laughs> and all of you are so beautiful and amazing and talented. And it's just, it's amazing to work with incredible women like all of you just is the greatest joy. It really is. And I love BT and Hannah as because I have two daughters and just seeing that love and best friendship and relationship in work. Ah, oh, beautiful. Okay, I'm going to get back, ask Ginger, one more question here. Well, actually, a couple more questions. If Scream Test is the big hit that it should become, do you see a sequel in the future? Well, you never say no to the possibility of a sequel. Um, my husband's been doing horror movies since the 80s, so he knows of the school that you always leave it open for that possibility of a sequel. Um, of course, I can't reveal who, who lived and who died. And right. if your favorite people did die, how do you bring them back? Do you do the soap opera route and they're a twin or they're a brother or they're... <laughs> you have, sometimes you have to get creative, but the, the beauty is, is I have to say, I, am, I personally am not a huge horror fan. Um, but I have enjoyed this movie. I'm extremely proud of the editing job I did on this movie. Um, we've watched it several times and I'm not tired of watching it. I, I laugh out loud. I enjoy the ride. I enjoy all the actors and all the, everything that they brought to it. But having met you, Donna Jean, and then of course, Felissa, and, and seeing the fan base, I'm just floored how wonderfully warm and helpful and loyal and wanting to do whatever they can to help promote whatever project it is that you're doing, especially with, you know, with you guys involved. And I want to say to all of them that, you know, thank you for everything you're doing as far as sharing our posts and liking our page and, and spreading the word and calling the theaters and doing whatever you can to bring this, 
this film to your theater. It is a fantastic drive-in theater movie. So I just feel like the, the sun, the moon, and the stars is kind of lining up it, despite the pandemic, which has been a downer for so many. For us, it actually kept us indoors working on editing the film to exactly the way we wanted it. And we were able to get the help of some people that, um, you know, from post-production that we might not necessarily have been able to afford, but because of the pandemic, we kind of could afford them, which was phenomenal. Uh, the music is outstanding. We've used the composer before in a film we did ooh, back in 2003 or six or whatever. So it was nice to have another project for him to work on, but, uh, um, I'm not sure. Did I answer your question? <laughs> yes, you did. I sort of rambled there. Sorry about that. <laughs> you know what? That's what we're all here for. <laughs> <laughs> but this is fun seeing everybody because most everybody I haven't seen. I mean, I've talked to Felissa on the, but you know, I haven't literally, we haven't seen each other. I'm looking forward to seeing Hannah and BT and uh, Mercedes on Friday night because you guys are all local. So that's going to be pretty awesome. Um, um, and then Phyllis has got some fans that have already said they live in Ocala and they're planning on being there. And Darby's got some fans who said they're planning on being there. So if we can pack this place, that would be pretty awesome. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm nervous, but I'm excited. I'm excited because I think it deserves to be packed. But, you know, we, he won't let us do pre-reservation. So it's sort of like first come, first serve. 7 p.m. is when the gates open and the movie probably won't start till. 8 40 9 o'clock I guess when it gets dark so but it's hmm. pretty exciting well speaking of which let's talk about their premiere the when the where the details gotcha well it's uh it's premiering at the Ocala drive-in in Ocala Florida like I said the gates are opening at seven um no outside food so let's support this this guy who's got the drive-in support their concession stands of course they want you to wear masks anytime you're outside your car or you're going to the concession stand um, our plan is to do a Q&A, a Zoom Q&A like this at, I say halftime, at intermission, I guess, <laughs> not halftime. So uh, I know Bob's going to be there. Brendan's supposed to be there, who plays Doc Williams. Um, obviously, BT, Hannah, we'll see who we get. And then I'm going to text Felissa and Darby and some of the others to see if we can bring them in. And that is Friday, July 24th, which will be this coming Friday. Very good. Thank you, Donna Jean. You're right. I digressed there. <laughs> you know, between us all, we get all the pieces in. They need to focus so we can make sure they get all the pieces and parts. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, I cannot thank you enough. And I really look forward to seeing you all in person when we can be celebrating just what a success this film has been. And I will plan on doing the interview with you for the sequel. That sounds awesome. Thank you, Donna Jean. Your words to the God in the sky's ears of uh, movie successes. <laughs> thank and you thank so you. much, Donna Jean. You are amazing and we love you so much for everything you do, the support and the love you give this community. Thank you. And to all of the women, amazing. Well, thank you, and thank you so much for joining us. And we'll see you over at the coffee house. Thank Good you, night. Dustin. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye, ladies. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thank, you. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. You can join our Women in Horror family by subscribing today. You can stalk us by clicking on the bell icon. You can watch more of my show or any of my sister shows by clicking on one of the videos to the right. Until next time, fiends. Take care.